Hello, my friends. Welcome to Unstoppable Female Entrepreneurs. I'm Kelsey Matheson, and I have one of my clients who's back on this podcast. She was here with the group of my clients who've all written books or in the process of writing books and helping you all to write your book, if that's something that you want to do. And now Jillian Wagner is back. This is going to be a very interesting episode. <laughs> Essentially, she's back because she read my feet. I know you're all like, wait, what? So Jillian is a yoga teacher. She is a wellness entrepreneur. She is a body reader. I mean, you'll, when I introduce her, she'll be able to describe what she does a lot better than I can. Um, and this is also part of why we're doing this call because she's in my mastermind. She's been in my mastermind for a while now, building her business, shifting her business, pivoting her business. And she's always told us that she can, she reads bodies and she can tell you a lot from looking at your body and also specifically your feet. So finally I was like, okay, right, Jillian, I'm going to send you a photo of my feet. So if you're like sitting on the floor and you put your legs in like butterfly, right? You're, the bottom of your feet are together. The soles of your feet are together and you take a photo from above. Um, that's basically the photo that I sent to Jillian and she sent me this voice memo back of all these amazing and crazy things that she could see just from looking at a photo of my feet. They're not even in person. Right. I'm in New York. She's in Germany. Crazy. And so, um, so I thought, okay, you know, we have to, we have to have a conversation about this on the podcast and we have to have a conversation, not only about my reading, but what this means for your business moving forward, because Jillian doesn't have really, it doesn't really have, um, doesn't really have this part of her business, um, in place yet. I would say. So Jillian, welcome back to the podcast. Why don't you introduce yourself? Maybe talk a little bit about what I was just sharing, but you know, from your perspective and, and probably a lot more articulately, <laughs> and then we'll dive in. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. And thank you for inviting me. I really feel privileged to be able to be here and, um, and share what I know with your readers. So yeah, I think that's really amazing. Um, yeah. So what I do is I, I, I think the idea of having a certain knowledge of people's body language and the way that their energy is kind of running started really early. And I, I didn't know it was exceptional until much later. And then I met a group of yogis and you know them as well, Kelsey from Katoni Yoga. And they had kind of um, become a little bit more articulate with the feet, the direction of the body and, and, and things like that. And so I combined what I would call as my intuition or that inner voice of what I feel from people with being able to read um, the map basically of people's bodies. So what I do is I, uh, a, the feet are kind of like a slice of cake, if you will. Uh, so once you look at the feet, you can pretty much tell the journey of somebody's life. It's almost like opening up the pages of a, of a book and being able to read about their childhood and you know what happened to them in, in, the, in the years of being a teenager. And not specifics, but definitely I can see when there's been hardship, mm -hmm. um, when there's been sort of trauma on some level, and I can see if it's personal or if it's more out in the world, that kind of thing. And I can see the parents were well-suited, um, I actually had somebody just ask me that one question. So I was like, okay, sit down, put yourself in Baddha Konasana, the, the butterflies you mentioned, and let's just have a look. She was so convinced that her parents were so unsuited and that they, they, you know, and that's why they were kind of grumbling in their old age and I, and her feet were kind of jammed together, which is actually the sign of, no, actually they're, they're super well suited. <laughs> it was a good base for each for you other. You mean it. well suited yeah, for each other. Yeah. Yeah. For each other. Yeah. So that was a, it was a good it was a good match as far as the universe is concerned for whatever purpose, right? Mm -hmm. That's the kind of stuff that I'm, that I'm looking at. And usually then if I were to do it live, I would have the benefit of being able to see the direction of the body. Sometimes I'll ask mm -hmm. that uh, to people. Do you typically sit this way? That kind of thing. If it's, um, you know, something relevant. So we could talk about that as well when we get through the, through the reading and see some of the things that I saw there, there's, there would be then a relatable 
body experience to that so that you could double check basically the markers or the map, if you will. Yeah. So that's kind of what I do. The map of the body, right? That's crazy. The map of the body and also the story, like reading it like a story. Yeah. It's uh, uh, the word I like to use is the narrative. So it's basically, Mm -hmm. it's not just what's happening to you. It's what you take from it. Because you can have two people, even twins, for example, who have the same experience and the way it affects them is completely different and it might send them on completely different trajectories, which is what makes people so interesting. I was saying yesterday because I was, uh, I was invited out to dinner with the group who just went through the teacher training that I was, um, that I was one of the uh, uh, teachers of. And um, I was saying I should have been a journalist maybe because I'm so curious about people's stories. So when we were doing these 10 minute uh, feedback sessions and I was sitting there and there was, you know, two or three minutes left. I was like, what do you do? Like, you know, I wanted to know <laughs> what people do as well as, you know, learning, learning yoga and why, why did they want to do it? That kind of thing. I think that's always very interesting. So you're fascinated in people, um, which I think is what makes you such a great teacher. And so let's, I mean, let's dive into a, a little bit of what you saw just in that photo that I sent you. Okay. So, I mean, the big, the biggest obvious thing that you were talking about as well were the arches of your feet. Um, Kelsey has really high high. arches. Yeah. For (laughs) your listeners. Um, actually I've rarely seen, seen arches that high before. I think I've seen one more example of yours. And so the thing that's specifically exciting about your feet is the gap in between the soles of the feet forms what's known as a vesica Pisces. And that's a kind of a geometrical shape, if you will, from um, ancient mathematics. And the vesicle, vesica Pisces is basically a shape for creation. So when you take two circles and you cross them over, and you see this sometimes in coaching um, learning and stuff like that, where they've got kind of like the world, you know, um, your your story, the world's story of what happened and then what actually happened is this little thing in the middle. Have you ever seen that? They push two circles together. Anyway, so it's that shape, Vesica Pisces. It's also uh, the portal to life. And then how we uh, basically read it in what I do is it's kind of like a transformative and creative portal. And the fact that yours is so massive means that you're, I think I called you a magical alchemist. So the your propensity or your gift, I would say, coming into the world is that you have this propensity to create where no one else can see the options that you see and you create possibilities out of, out of things that where there maybe somebody sees only one direction they can go. And then all of a sudden you could say, I see five, you know, mm. or let's, let's unpack it and we'll see where you can go with it. That kind of thing. So, um, makes sense for what you're doing. Definitely. The other part of having the high arches, and this can vary in the height of the arches, obviously as well, is it's, uh, reflective of how, well, you bounce back from things because nobody gets um, a smooth ride. We all get yes. stuff happen to us. We often think we're the only ones when we're down and out, but yeah. we know, we know intrinsically and we know because we talk to people usually um, that there's other people going through similar things, but what you, what you do with it is different. And in your case, your ability to bounce back, your shock absorbers are excellent um, and so what that would mean to you is your your need for techniques for resilience in life is very low. So you have a natural inborn resilience. You don't need to learn that many techniques. You were, you were born with them. You innately know what to do. Whereas somebody with flat feet would need to um, spend some time filling up their toolbox so that when things happen to them, that they've got techniques they can use in order to keep moving forward instead of getting stuck and feeling, um, depressed basically. Yeah. Right. So that was the first biggest thing. Um, yeah. And I think I gave you the quote from the Bhagavad Gita to kind of talk about this unbelievable, amazing shape to your feet, which is for me so exceptional, um, because I have high arches too, but I do not have this clear cut Vesica Pisces. And for you, it's the shape of an eye, which is that thing I said, where you, you have, you have, um, amazing, outstanding vision, I guess, is, is what you would say. So the quote that, that felt to me like it spoke to what was happening there is one whose intelligence has attained to unity. It's an interesting wording. Um, casts away from him both sin and virtue, right? So it's this ability, this balance, this um, 
wholeness to you, this strength and stability, which creates this magical alchemist, which is what you were really <laughs> excited about. So right? exciting. I yeah. love being called a magical alchemist. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can get to that um, in a minute, but the other yeah. parts of the reading were the size of the big toes. And um, right. if there's anybody out there listening who gets regular pedicures, this is a really stubborn, stubborn recurrence. And in fact, a lot of these kinds of dry patches are, and they just are indicative of how you live or how you have been living. And so these dry sides of the, of the big toes uh, show this tendency to worry and think. So worry over thinking is the job of the stomach spleen in traditional Chinese medicine. So people who, um, yeah, turn things over in their head a lot, um, give things a lot of thought and spend a lot of time yeah, putting worrying about pe their people, that is kind of who you are. And I didn't know this about you, actually, so I thought that was very interesting. So, <laughs> I mean, you're a very um, empathetic person, so it goes hand in hand, but somehow I just never mm -hmm. never thought about it. Um, the, big, the big toe mound on you was a little bit flat, and um, so then yeah. the read on that is that the lungs need some work. And so there's two ways of looking at it. One is that you actually do need cardiorespiratory work. So get out into fresh air, um, work mm -hmm. your lungs. And then the second read of that is, is one of the voices in you diminished. So are you having trouble expressing yourself either emotionally or saying what you desire in the world or what you want from the world, you know, coming out and, and sharing who you are in your authentic voice. And then we talked about, because I do know this about just a uh, full disclosure to your listeners. I do know you have right shoulder pain, which was kind of like the, I think the catalyst that got us together. Right. Yeah. Um, the, it's a trust issue as well. When you lose your ability to speak, you have had experiences that have revealed to you that you cannot trust everybody, which is true. Mm -hmm. But then what it would also reveal is perhaps you haven't developed a, what, would, what I would call a table of eight. So that close knit group of people that you can use to really express yourself, how you need to express yourself to feel heard and seen in the world. So that was that. Mm. Yeah. And then there were the heels uh, that we yeah. talked about, which was the um, spinning your wheels. I was like, is there something that you're not acting on? Is there something where you're holding back and you're kind of spinning your wheels, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then inside of the arches, there was some striping going on and some collapse in the back of the arch toward the pinky toe side, which was the mm -hmm. adrenals being overworked. And I see this a lot right now when people send me their feet. Yeah. And I just think this is the, the tendency to overwork and not be able to recharge and not be able to say, it's okay. I'm just going to take a day off. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, especially for us women. Yeah. yeah. Especially for entrepreneurs and especially people who work from home. I think it's hard to separate and just go, I'm, I'm going to put my phone away. I'm just yeah. not going to answer it until this time or this day or whatever. I think that's uh, seems to be quite challenging. And then there were other markings on your feet, which I'm not sure you want to go into here, but it's just, it just reveals to me then at what point in time, sort of, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I usually have like a two year span. Things have happened to you. And what's interesting on Kelsey's feet is that there's some grass that has grown between where not her really. lines start. I don't start. have mold on or grass on my actual No, no, she doesn't <laughs> really have grass. But it's interesting that a lot of people, when they have these lines on their feet that indicate these really strong responses to the things that have happened in their life, there's deep grooves, right? And Kelsey has really deep grooves, but there's a gap between the heel. Um, a, a substantial gap, actually. Sorry, I speak German a lot of the time, so I'm some stumbling over some of my words here. But there's this, this substantial space between the actual edge of her heel and then where these deep grooves start, which which really indicates that she's been able to cover right a lot now. of ground. <laughs> Sorry? I'm You're looking, looking at her oh. right now. It's so true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's so interesting. And and um, so what, that's, what that says to me is that you've been able to put a lot of um, you've done a lot of groundwork, I guess is the right way to say it, to help yourself out with these really strong responses, these really um, challenging things, these traumas that have happened in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Part of your story. Yeah. And that's pretty amazing, but it, it points to those really awesome arches that you've got anyways, right? Your ability to to withstand so many things, a strong wind. Yeah. I love that. That's amazing. So 
so this is very, I, I love all of this. So like, for example, like you were saying, like if somebody's, somebody doesn't have super high, high arches like I do, and they have more flat feet that they would need more techniques for resilience, or uh, they might need some support, right. In, in, in dealing with hardship in their lives. Um, and then you were also able to, like, you were able to pinpoint certain times in my life when there were certain traumas or certain things happened to me. Um, so like, and, and then we can, we can get into the kind of the magical alchemist thing and what that means for me, but just kind of in general, like when you are reading someone's feet and you have offer this, you know, what you see, like, what are the benefits then? Like, I, I mean, I just mentioned one, right? Like you need techniques for resilience, right? Like that is a huge, you know, benefit. You need support. You need, you know, you need this, you need that. Um, what are some of the other benefits you would say? Like when you can look at somebody's feet, what are some of the other benefits that then you can offer them in order for them to in, 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 implement this, or, you know, certain things into their life to make their lives better? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think that um, for me, it's an opportunity to become unstuck. So if you've got somebody who uh, feels a little bit like, why do I keep meeting the same people all the time? Or I don't seem to be able to move forward in this part of my life, or I don't know my destiny or my purpose, things like that. These are really good pieces of information then to kind of help you like, well, you, you're kind of designed to be a certain way, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like the body type that you have, you can fight it if you want to, but if you're an ectomorph or a mesomorph, I'm talking about just plain body types here. Um, you're kind of born that way. You're born with the color eyes that you have. You're born, you know, with a, the shape of mouth that you have and stuff. I mean, we have techniques uh, these days to change all of these things, but really the question is, um, would it maybe be beneficial to then lean into who you are authentically? Because what that does is it aligns you for more joy so if you feel more authentically you, there is a flow to life and there is an ease to it that is really hard to come by if you're struggling against the current, so to speak. It's like sometimes I see people swimming upstream because they're not embracing who they are and what their capabilities are. And perhaps even um, to get a little woo-woo or, or uh, esoteric, like what is your destiny? Maybe there is mm -hmm. a story that you've been put on the planet to participate in. And if you're denying yourself that, uh, you may feel um, vata deranged, we say in yoga. So a little bit off or discombobulated, you'll just feel imbalanced, disharmonious. Yeah. yeah and you see people walking around, you know, a little bit bitter with life, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I would love to prevent that where people, they're mm -hmm. 80 years old and they go, I should have, I wish I had of you know, and so I think if you can discover at some point, some of the things, some of the clues that life is sending you along the way, I think that would be very helpful. And then things like knowing that you're a warrior, what that can, right. um, yeah, what that can do for you is just kind of remind you of something you probably know about yourself, remind you that you may be um, doing it a little bit too much, that perhaps you don't need to do it quite so much. And yeah. Um, and like uh, the thing about the heels, right? You're spinning your wheels, that kind of thing. Yeah. Then that would be, you know, an answer to a question, perhaps. Do I need to move on this? Mm, yeah, maybe. If your heels are getting dry, you look like you're stuck. Yeah. It might be time to move forward on it, you know? Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah. I don't tell people what to do. I just offer the information. And I often listen to the responses and... Often what happens is there's an intuitive side to it. There's that, um, and intuition for me is that either magnet, that sort of magnetic pull out of you of something. I think Dr. Brooke talked about this the other day in our session as well. She felt pulled to move and go to California. That's intuition. And the other one is, is a push, but it's always a very comfortable knowing there's no fear to it. So that. That's an interesting description about um, intuition, which will help with our conversation about the magical alchemist as well. So, yeah, I think yes. for me, it's kind of like that movie Groundhog Day. If if you feel a little bit like that, this is definitely uh, very helpful. And then the other thing is just to feel validated. 
as to who you are. And to know that that little special combination of things that you have and those stories that you have experienced, they, they were real, they happen, they're in your body. And it's part of your, now it's part of your cellular network. Like it's in there. Yeah. You can't deny it, you know? Yeah. I love this. I mean, I do a lot of work, um, with some of my clients, um, like energy, energy work, and it's a modality called SRI. So somatic respiratory integration. And it's, so it's breath and, um, you know, and, um, and the body and, and, and integrating, um, movement, breath, energy, body, uh, work in order to release and heal and uncover and process trauma. And I always say like, we store trauma in our body. You know, yogis have been talking about this for a long time and where we store certain things in our hips or where we store certain things in our back or our neck or our throat. And then the chakras, like there's so many modalities that touch on, I think, you know, these, these, um, these aspects of, of wellness. Um, but I think like in terms of what you were just saying about trauma and this narrative, like it's, it's in us, it's there, it's showing up in our, in our bodies. And, um, so I think that just allowing ourselves to, um, I would say explore this a little bit more can be so helpful, um, as we're working towards building our businesses and making ourselves better entrepreneurs and creating that kind of unstoppable life for ourselves. Um, yeah, so my journey through your uh, coaching has been really helpful for me. So when I, just so that your listeners know, when I was, um, when I joined, I had just decided to close my yoga studio and uh, part of the reason was COVID. But what I realized about myself throughout my journey as being a, um, an entrepreneur and an owner of a yoga studio is that I, I didn't actually have the capacity to say no to things that I really didn't want to do or that were too draining for me. Like I was willing to empty out every piece of energy that I had to kind of please uh, my community. And I created a community, which was great. I needed that here, but, uh, and it was successful, but you know, it was almost like COVID was this door out. I hope nobody's listening to my, my community, but it just kind of felt uh, like an invitation to me to, and, and I know that um, my, I had an assistant working for me at the time and she was like, you need to take what you do out into the world. And so once I discovered this online world, I, was, well, mm. I, I thought, oh gosh, yeah, this is a really great venue for me almost. And so I've had a bit of a metamorphosis inside your coaching and it's helped me also to, to see what I'm doing the whole time, you know, like you just keep coming up against these same stories over and over again. I'm sure you see it a lot uh, in the coaching that you do. And I'm my own <laughs> worst enemy, but it's been a developmental process of trying to figure out what do I really want to offer that is my USP? You know, what am I uniquely able to do? And uh, it was fairly recently when we really, when you really discovered that I do this kind of on the side and you were like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Why aren't you talking about yeah. this? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. Why haven't you turned this into a thriving business to help people? I mean, you yeah. have a thriving business to help people, but this I think could just be an aspect of your gifts and your talent that um, could just be so beneficial for you and for the people who work with you. Yeah, and I think it developed accidentally this kind of online version because uh, you kept saying to me, how can you do it online? Can you set up cameras and so forth? And I had a friend here from Canada and I read her feed. I read her husband's feed and she was freaked out and she's a lawyer. Like she's completely <laughs> black and white and gave me the evidence and stuff like that. So yeah. she was really freaked out. And so when I went to do my speech in Costa Rica at the Gross Global Happiness Summit, I needed to talk about it. And I thought she had amazing feet. Like hers looked like an 80 year old. They're so wrinkly, right? Cause she's just had so much happen in her life. And so I asked her to take a picture and it was when she sent the picture. And when I was able to talk about it at, in Costa Rica, I thought that's how I can do it. That is really how I can do it. And then you were so gracious and uh, sent me yours. And then it was very obvious that there is still this intuitive pattern with me where I can read what I see, but I can, I can also add spontaneously to what's coming up for me. And I think that's, that's valid as well. I don't necessarily yeah. need you sitting 
in the room with me. Although That's sometimes right. I have like these inner pushes of, of, you know, where I just think, I remember doing when the, one of the first times we were tested to see if we understood reading, I did this girl and stuff like that. And we were, we were told to stop. And just before we stopped, I said, I'm not really reading this in your feet, but I feel so-and-so and so-and-so. And And I said something to her, I can't remember what it was. And she, she started to cry and she was like, how do you know that about me? And I said, I, I have no idea. So there's definitely like an open channel when I Mm -hmm. try to figure people out. So, and definitely when I was reading your feet, there was just a little more coming up for me than just the lines. Like I definitely added in there. It's almost like there's, I don't know what that is, but yeah. Yeah, anyway, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's like, yeah. yeah, it's like it's you're getting this intuitive hit. It's like it's you're just opening yourself up to the messages to, you know, um, I think it's 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 powerful. So let's dive in a little bit to what does that mean when you say you're an, a magical alchemist? <laughs> oh, this is the one I wanted to share with you. I wrote it down for you because I was like, I was writing notes and stuff like that. And then I, I wanted to make sure my language is clear for anybody who's listening. So um First of all, an alchemist is, you know, transforming things. So anybody who's unfamiliar with this particular term, if you think about alchemy in the ancient um, framework of it, it would be turning gems into stone, uh, sorry, stones into gems the other way around. And then also these magic potions that they would make elixirs so that people would have a more fulfilling life, or let's say they're looking for a more sexual life or, or they're trying to have a baby, that kind of thing. They would create these elixirs to try to help people. So that's really what alchemy is. And it, it got a little bit corrupted at some point, And then people were trying to get the alchemist to turn, to turn um, coal into gold or, or into diamonds and instantly, instead of waiting for the process of the earth to press it strongly and turn it into the gem that it's supposed to be. So, um, and I, I, you know, I always find that a kind of an interesting uh, piece of the story of alchemy because it's, it's almost like it's had lasting resonance. We always want a pill or a button right. we or want the magic five pill. steps we want the quick too. Fix. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think some things like gems, uh, you know, need time to develop. And I believe yeah. that as, as human beings, you can't be 20 and be extremely wise unless you're, uh, you know, kind of uh, a genius of some kind that's, that shows up every once in a while, like uh, Mozart or something, you know, at three playing concertos. I, I think that happens probably once in a blue moon, but I think most of us go through the process of living in order to get to where we're supposed to be. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a journey and you have to be patient and you have to be able to read the signals and understand where you're meant to go next, you know, and that's where I think the things that we do in wellness really, really help out. So, um, so in specifically for um, um, a magical alchemist, the intuition is the greatest strength of an alchemist. And then the, it's the most enviable trait is this razor sharp instinct that you have. So that's definitely mm. um, who you are. And there's something to remember what, what often makes alchemists stumble is often the inner voice clashes with common sense or logic. So right. there's this, yeah, this clash of two worlds. And we live in a very sort of left brained world where we want we want science to show us a study before we'll try something out, that kind of thing. So um, having this flowing intuition can be a bit daunting and it requires trust and practice, I think, to call it to the surface yeah. and follow it. Yeah. And then so specifically for you, um, because of the way your your arts are shaped, I think that altering and transforming things for you is really what you can do. So it's, it's transformation, liberation, and change would be the three words I would use to describe your gifts. And, um, I think that you are able to see things that other people can't see. So that's that vision. And this is, this is the real magic for you. This is specifically then your magic because of the shape of the the arch, which is so incredible for me (laughs) that this, yeah, the inner vision is so strong. It's so razor sharp that you can probably, uh, it would feel like magic to people around you, what you can create out of nothing basically, Mm -hmm. or where they see nothing. And the other thing is you can take two opposites and transform that into something harmonious 
which is also, yeah, that speaks well for That's what you have landed in as a business, yeah. being able to take that struggle for people away. Um, yeah, so that is your magical alchemy. That's really, and I think this is just a basic mantra, but I trust my intuition and follow its wisdom would be something you could use if you feel a little bit daunted by it, by the power yeah. of it. And and then just, um, you know, I, I think you're a well-seasoned intuitive person, but just reminding yeah. yourself that it, if there's fear involved, that's your mind. Yeah. Anything like, oh, I, I shouldn't fly today because I wonder why I feel scared to fly. Well, that's just you being scared to fly. You're a mom. So, you know, that's your... That's got nothing to yeah. do with your intuition, right? Your intuition is that knowing, grounding, solid feeling of this is how it is. That's how it lands, intuition, and the pulling yeah. or the pushing, which you probably um, know about. Yeah. So I think the infinite possibilities, the potentiator, the creator, creating something completely new is your is your specialty, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. The this magic. Is interesting. It's really, yeah. it's interesting because I think like, I've always known that I have a strong intuition and I trust my gut. That's I trust good. my gut instinct. A lot of people ask me even like, you know, how did you know to open Anamaya or how did you know to, you know, to open your backpack company? It was like pure instinct. I just knew in my gut. I just knew even like going to Costa Rica for the first time with a friend and then knowing like one day I'm going to have a house here. I didn't, you know, I didn't even know I was going to have a house and a business or, you know, all the things, a couple businesses. I had a yoga clothing company there as well, but I just knew I'm going to have a house here. And at the time I didn't have the money. I didn't speak the language. I didn't even live in the country, but yeah. I just knew. And then, you know, 20 years later, not only do I have, you know, a house, but we have pro other pieces of property. I have a business. I have, you know, ran another business, um, you know, very, very. Uh, involved in that area of Costa Rica now for, for 15 years, it was just, a, it was just gut, hmm. gut instinct. It didn't make any sense. You know, you're saying like sometimes that, right. The, um, the, the inner voice can clash with common sense. Um, yeah. starting investing in and, and starting a business in Costa Rica <laughs> made absolutely no sense. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, probably also maybe the the logic of moving to New York from Canada was made sense on some fronts, but it probably didn't make sense to everybody on all fronts, oh, no. right? It's like no, before absolutely. you do that, fly back and forth, you know. Yeah, yeah. so no, people yeah. were like, "What are you kidding me? Are you crazy?" We had a very comfortable life and a beautiful home in one of the most desirable neighborhoods in Toronto, and we we're gonna sell it and move our family to New York <laughs> with yeah. no with no work, like with no promised work. I mean, I can work from anywhere with my coaching practice and I, I can work from anywhere, but um, my husband didn't have any promised work, right? We yeah, have other amazing. friends who moved from, from Toronto to New York, but um, there was promised work. You know, she had a show. Uh, that wasn't the case for us. And so, and it hasn't been easy. It yeah, well, that's the, probably... that's not, there's no guarantees, right? Yeah. So sometimes when you follow your intuition, you think, oh, that was the wrong decision. But really, no, no, it wasn't the wrong decision. You're supposed to learn while you're here. It's yeah. actually not meant to be smooth sailing. I mean, it's great when it does feel like smooth sailing. Um, and it does happen occasionally, thankfully. I think otherwise, I think we'd all give up. But um, yeah, but I think we need to embrace this idea of, you know, having discomfort does not necessarily mean it was a bad choice. It just means it's just part of the story that you're living. It's part of the journey. Right. And then that's where some of those techniques really help with like, what is your, what is your relationship to something? If it makes you feel uncomfortable, you know, maybe it's got nothing mm -hmm. to do with, you know, like a relationship of being uncomfortable without an income, I don't know what that means to the universe. I'm sure if you're looking at, um, I, my husband was just, this is a little bit off topic, but my husband was just reading a book where they were talking about the existence of man, of humans. And um, if you take it like a year, 365 days, we're kind of like the, when man appeared, when the Neanderthal human being appeared, yeah. it was kind of like five to 12 on December the 31st in the year. That's the how... Year. That's how short our existence has been when you take that just our planet's life, you know? So if yes. you think about 
I don't know, a few years time not having an income. I'm not sure in the grand scheme of things, if that feels relevant to whatever's, you know, helping us along on the journey here at the universe, yes. whatever you want to call it. So yeah, yeah I think that's probably picture. the misunderstanding that we have and that we're a little, we're all, um, not, not pointing at all towards your feelings. I have, um, I know that it's, oh, it was a struggle and it's valid and all that, but, um, yeah, I think possibly the way human beings look at time may be it. That's the relationship that makes us suffer, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, or one what, of them. You know, like what what our what our thoughts are about what it is that we're going through, and what our thoughts are about our expectations with time, what our thoughts are about you know uh, you know what we estimate how long we estimate things will take, and our relationship to that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 been interesting because I also I mean I I like I work with my clients on it's all happening for you. And then let's look at what is happening for you and move forward as these are lessons. These are opportunities, even when it feels like, you know, nothing is working or whenever I try, you know, is, is, you know, it's failing or, uh, you know, I, I don't have, have the skills or I, I, I you know, I'm not good enough and I, or I'm not smart enough or I'm not young enough or I'm not old enough or whatever, you know, whatever those, you know, I'm not enough statements are that we all have. Um, it's interesting because I coach it. I work with my clients on all of that. And of course I experience it myself. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. 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 Oh, same right? thing. I mean, yeah. 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 I still mm-hmm. have the, you know, I'm not enough statements. I still have the, you know, like I underestimate how long things are going to take. I still, you know, and when we had, when we were in certain situations, cause then of course COVID hit and then of course the strike hit with my husband, you know, um, yeah. I had many moments where I was like railing to the gods of like, why is this mm-hmm. happening to me? Even though I coach, it's all happening for you. But I was like, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> why is this yeah. happening to me? I've, we've been through enough already, you know, but, uh, but I guess my feet show that I can bounce back pretty easily. <laughs> yeah, totally. You'll find a way. And you know, if it's not going to be through your husband's work, then you'll figure it out. Kelsey yeah. will figure it out. I want to be your best friend, Kelsey. Can you figure my life out? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I will figure it out. Can we well, change our relationship? Figure, that's right. Let's figure it out, Jillian. Let's look at your business. So like, for those of you who are listening, you might have this gift, this skill that everyone thinks is like so amazing and wow. How can we create this into a business? So the, one of the things that I had suggested to Jillian is I said, you can, you can offer these readings at a price point and then based on, which is kind of, you know, like I, she did, she sent, I I sent her a photo, she did a reading and then based on what she found, I wanted to know more. I still want to know more. (laughs) because There's still all these things. Yeah. You still have to ask questions. (laughs) Yeah. I have to ask the questions, but I also want to be I want to be mindful of this time because I do want to use some of this episode to talk about your business so that others who are out there um, can be like, yeah, you know, I have this really cool gift too. What does that look like? So the way that this all rolled out was I sent a Jillian a photo. She read my feed. I wanted to learn more. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wanted to learn more. So my thought initially was that Jillian could offer these readings at a certain price and then when people are like, I want to learn more, because there's only so much you can do in a reading, then you could offer a package of how to work with people. Because you already work with people one-on-one. You already have some one-on-one coaching clients, correct? Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Is this implemented in your one-on-one coaching in any way so far? Definitely. At, At the point? very beginning, I always read people. You do? For Yeah, yeah. For me, it's... <laughs> so I... Full disclosure here. I operate from the assumption that people are actually a bit, a little bit deluded. So what people believe and think um, and talk about might not necessarily be what's going on. Mm-hmm. And so if I operate for that assumption, then I go check it out myself. <laughs> I'm almost like the scientist, you know, so I, I, I get people to sit and have a look. So some people will say, well, I'm stressed out. I need help with this, that, and the other. And so I put them in this position of a seated Baddha Konasana and I take a look and I, I look at the feet and I, I look at, uh, particularly if I'm, I'm 
asked to do yoga practices with them of some kind, I look at the entire way that they're seated, what direction they're turning and which way they're slanting uh, when they're seated, if they can even sit in this position, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And really for me, that reveals so much. And then I know how I can work with them physically. And then I can see what they need on the coaching front. So most of what I do is very physical type of coaching. So I'll give people um, uh, some kind of breathing techniques. I'll give them... um, meditation. I'll give them um, poses to do that will help them to feel more comfortable, take away some of the the pain, kind of pain management. And then sometimes I'll give them physical ideas for them to um, help either raise the energy that they have in their body or help them understand that there's basically a tug of war between their virtues and what they're required to do in their job, that kind of thing. We'll talk about that maybe if that comes up. But yeah, I definitely do readings. Yeah. Right. Now, is this in person and online? Yeah, both. So in in online, then I would um, take the feet first. And it's not as in-depth as the reading I would do with you, where I just went way into, but that was a different um, reason we did the reading for you. But um, And then I would sit with them in an online session and have a look at how they sit. So they have to position the camera. But everybody can see on Zoom, right? You can see how you're seated. Yeah. Um, So then I just set it up there and um, and then I ask them questions about, sometimes I get them to turn and sit to the side so I can see what's going on in this. In how are you able to sit upright? And I ask yeah. them how it feels. Is it a struggle or not? Whereas in person, I can see that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So I just have to ask more questions online. That's all. Yeah. Right. So, cause that's one thing that we didn't do is you didn't, you didn't take a look at how I, I sit or anything like that. We haven't done that, but, yeah. um, so how are you promoting that this is, um, a part of what you do? I do not promote it <laughs> at all. I, I talked about I it for the first time uh, at the Gross Global Happiness Summit. And I was inundated with people going, oh my God, oh my God, can you read me? Including these these sort of profs, you know, that put these things together who yes. I didn't think would be interested at all. It, it completely took me by surprise that people yes. who are academics would be interested in in what I do. It just seems to me like they would have everything together and know everything about themselves, particularly if they're like already 70 years old and, you know, a, a best-selling author kind of thing. So it was very, very interesting and revealing to me. And I think I talked to you about that. Yeah. 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 So. That's why I, I asked the question because I, I knew the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't. I didn't. And uh, I think because I grew up in such a pragmatic family with the exception, mm-hmm. the exception was my dad. He was very spiritual. Um, but I think, yeah, my mom's like, a, she's an accountant, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. so I, I don't know why. And while I was, I moved around. I think we talked about that too. So I moved around a lot. And so I was always made fun of and I didn't want to be made fun of, I think. That's just an old yeah. story turning away in there. And so I just didn't want to feel that discomfort of people laughing at me because they thought it was too silly what I was offering. And it was you right. and the people at um, at the conference that really revealed to me how, interested people are in, in this. Yeah. 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 I think people are, are, are very interested in this. And I think like, look, are you always going to have people who are naysayers a hundred percent, right? Um, we can't please everyone all the time. And I think we have to remember that in whatever business that you're in, um, not everyone is going to be is going to want what you have to offer, is going to be in alignment with what you have to offer, is going to want to work with you, even if they do want what you offer, they might want it from somebody else. That is, that's just the name of the game. That's being an entrepreneur. But I do think it, it's so, I I love that you're bringing this up because I think it's so important, especially for everyone listening to recognize the narratives, the stories that we're telling ourselves about, you know, what it is that we offer and the assumptions that we're making. You made an assumption that certain people with a certain education or a certain background would think that this was silly to use your word, right? Or mm-hmm. would even go beyond thinking it was silly, make fun of you, right? And so yeah. how you've turned that assumption back on yourself, you've held it you've held it against yourself so you've stopped that potential growth or the the, the growth of your of your business in that in that area, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, for 10 years, basically, because when I opened my studio, yeah. I was reading people's bodies and they were just like, I can't believe you do this. You never talk about it. 
It's like, yeah, I was right. interested. <laughs> so, so here's the other thing too, is if you already include this in what you offer, do you feel like um, you could talk a lot more about it in terms of like, you know, for example, when you're speaking gigs over social, you know, however you meet people networking, do you feel like there's a way to talk to people about it or promote it so that it just is going to directly lead people to your one-on-one -on -one coaching program? Or do you feel you need something you know, like what you did with me and what you're doing, like, cause you showed people at that, uh, the conference in Costa Rica where you spoke, you showed them how you read your friend's feet, right? For people to be like, oh my gosh, what the, that, what the heck, this is crazy. And so even if they're not quite ready for one-on-one, -on -one, but they might want to do a one-off session is... I mean, and, and there is no right or wrong answer. This is about you and tapping into your intuition. If you think that that would help to grow your business to a certain point um, to get more one-on-ones in through the door, or would you rather just focus only on the one-on-one -on -one packaging or wait, you know, here, let me go back a minute. When people work with you one-on-one, -on -one, is it a number of sessions or do you do one-off calls for one-on-one? -on -one? Um, I have done just body readings. Like I did those in my studio where I would just, yeah, just do a reading so that people could basically get a confirmation of where they are and what's happening for them. Yeah. Um, I've done that. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's valid. I think people can just find out. I think that's good information for them actually. Right. Yeah. And then if they want to work with you on one-on-one -on -one in terms of like a longer term, then do you offer certain packages? Uh, yeah, I have like a 10 pack, but I've been asked recently if I could do like a three or for people who are, have limited income, that kind of thing. Like I do have a, an hourly rate that I charge for my um, personal trainings. So, um, and some people just, just say, I just want to work with you, like without a, a dot at the end. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. I have that. So some people just buy a package of 10. And yep. some people just go, just let's just make a permanent date. And then when I, you know, if I get to the stage where I don't want to do it anymore, then, then we'll stop. And so yeah. sometimes I've then had people for, yeah, have people for five years. Sometimes I get people for 10 pack, package of 10. And then I've done also uh, like body readings, just one off. And then just they've off. come back two years later and said, I'm ready for another one kind of a thing. Yeah. yeah right. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, like even with my, like I don't offer one-off sessions anymore. So if people want to work with me, they can work with me in the mastermind. Um, I'm going to be um, adapting my 10K group program and turning it into an evergreen. So it's just going to be like probably a $2,000 package for this uh, training on really how to create uh, a lead magnet and a funnel that will generate, you know, 10K in your business. And then they just sign up to it and it's, you know, evergreen. They have lifetime access to it at 2000. That is not ready yet, my folks, but it will be coming out, <laughs> my friends. Um, and then obviously the one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, if I have availability, because I'm still running Anamaya and I still have, you know, all these other things that are going on in my life, I have very limited time for, uh, or not, I have limited time. So that means I'm limited in terms of how many one-on-one -on -one coaching clients I can sign up. Um, so, uh, but I did offer one-on-ones for, for quite a while. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I just, got yeah, I took advantage of that at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. To build, so, it, build it up. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so now I don't, but um, same could be for you and your business model is you could start to offer these one-on-one -on -one sessions, or at least, I mean, you, it sounds like you already do. You're just not promoting it. You're just not putting it out there. People don't know. So yeah, that's kind of the word of mouth. Why. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so one of the things that you could be doing is talking to your current clients and saying like, if you know anyone who you know, you would feel would love a body reading, um, working with me, who was feeling stuck in their life, um, who was maybe kind of like coming up against the same hurdles, um, you know, and then you could have maybe a referral program that maybe they get an additional free session or a discount on a session or something like that. Um, and, um, and, you know, and ask for the referrals, right? Like, we already have our raving fans. We already have our, our clients who love us. Um, and sometimes we just don't think of it. 
But then when it's offered, like, oh, do you know someone who might be interested? And then our brain goes, oh, actually, yeah, I do. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. Well, it's because I didn't present it, but now I'm presenting it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, people always assume too that you're like, uh, you you have a full roster of people. People have always said, oh, you must have so many clients and stuff like that. I do and I don't. I mean, it comes and it goes, right? And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's been a big transition for me. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, and yeah. I think actually, you know, like promoting your promoting these sessions online, telling people that this is what you do, sharing your story about Costa Rica. Like when you shared this in Costa Rica, you couldn't believe um, the response that you got. Sharing that on on social or other podcasts, like you're doing right now, like sharing that story, I think is super super important. Um, and you know, talking about like, I can read your body, I can read your feet and I can tell you X, Y, and Z and just continuing to put that out there. So people know, and then they'll come and then they'll have this amazing experience. And then it will lead to more people who want packages or maybe, you know, maybe people who only want a one-off for now, but then they come back for another reading or, you know, you host a retreat in Italy and they're like, oh, I want to, you know, I want to join you know, Jillian's retreat or whatever that is. Right. So you're, um, but I do think, you know, we've talked a little bit about this in the mastermind, but I do think that really talking about this and telling people what it is that you do, how you help people and how you, you know, and you know, who you are, how you help, uh, what, what, uh, what you offer and how you help people is so, so important. And this is a part of how you help people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's yeah, I suppose it, it, for me, it's the clarity. I mean, it was funny that you said at the very beginning, can you tell people about what you do? You'll probably articulate it better. And I think I struggle with that, actually. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't give, um, you know, an elevator pitch and tell people really quickly what it is that I do. You know, I unstick people. Um. <laughs> yeah. Well, or, right? I mean, yeah. you help people. So you told me like you align people with more joy. Um you know, people who, so here's the thing. I help people who are feeling stuck in their life, who feel like they're swimming upstream. Right. And, and like, those are the, those are some of the notes that I wrote down. Right. So you align people to their joy. And then you said that, um, you know, people who no longer want to feel stuck or people who are feeling like they're swimming upstream. So just within that, you could say, I work with people who are feeling stuck in their lives, who are feeling like they're constantly swimming upstream. I know so many people who would raise their hand and go, yes, that's me. Yeah. 99.9% of us would raise our hands um, because in some way, shape or form, in some areas of our lives, we're feeling stuck. In some way, shape or form, in some areas of our lives, we feel like we're swimming upstream, not necessarily in all areas, but definitely in some. Yeah. So I think that's very relatable. That's who you help. And you help them to figure out, like, I'm just looking at my notes here, right? To figure out, um, what would you say? You help people to figure out what? What would you say? So I guess I give them their a perspective on their own lives. So I, I'm, I'm not like a masseuse. I'm not going to massage the part that yeah. hurts, but I can see the part that's hurting and offer ways out, I guess, you know, and just oh, the yeah. knowledge first, and then just say, when this happens in your body, it's your body actually signaling you that you're doing too much or too little of this, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I try to teach people how to read themselves so that they don't grind away too long um, doing the wrong thing. So it's almost like you can imagine, let's say if you grew up brushing your teeth in an incorrect way. And then the first time you went to the dentist, you were already 10 and you had like six cavities. If somebody had intervened when you were five or six, you would have been able to prevent that damage. And so that's kind of where I, how I see myself as like, if I could do, if I can intervene and help you stop, um, re always sort of, um, repeating the patterns that are kind of like you're undoing then I feel that's a really great help. That'll help you to steer your boat in a a different direction, if you will. Yeah. It's the repetitive patterns that I see and the trauma that I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you help people get unstuck in their lives. People who are feeling, who feel like they're swimming upstream. 
to break um, the patterns that aren't serving them, offer them a way out and prevent additional pain and suffering. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah. Yeah. My, my whole kind of, um, my whole why really is this belief that if we were more peaceful inside of ourselves and we felt a little bit more like we were aligned with our, our self and our own story, whatever that means to people, their destiny, there would be this contentment. And for me, contentment is just this underlying joy. Yeah. I feel like that would be a different world, you know? Yeah. There wouldn't, there wouldn't be all this kind of dichotomy of ideas all the time and people fighting about different beliefs. It wouldn't matter if you're comfortable in your own, you know, yeah. and you're comfortable in your own life and able to do what it is that you do. And I think also knowing that you're unique in some way that the, the way your life has unfolded for you and the way that you deal with it is so unique mm -hmm. that you don't have to struggle or fight or be envious about other people, you know? Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. I mean, so I think like, you know, and I love this, this kind of this, this part of the call, because of course I was very excited, to, you know, to hear more about what you saw in my reading, but I do think for everyone listening, you know, who has something that they offer that I think is unique, or maybe they already, cause you know, this is a podcast for women entrepreneurs, but so you, maybe there is a part, there is an aspect of what you offer that is so unique that you never really thought about it before that that could help you in your marketing, right? So it's like, you know, again, who you are, who you help and how you help them. So I think like with Jillian, for you, it's like, again, I'm, you know, I'm repeating myself here, but I just want, I want, I want it to kind of like for you to really think about this and you might choose another way of saying it, but it, I, you know, but when we get super clear, you help people who are stuck in their life, who are swimming upstream, break these patterns, offer a way out and prevent additional pain and suffering, right? So if you were to say, if you were just to say that, this is what I do in these readings. I read your body. I read your feet. I know it sounds weird, but here are my testimonials. This is how I work with people, right? Um, you know, I help you align with more joy in your life. And then when you are putting out content to promote this, this is what you do to say, you know, if you're interested, you know, book a call with me, um, you know, and this is what it costs. And then I'm going to read your feet and this is what you're going to learn about. And then after you have that call with them about reading their feet, then you can say, if you want to continue to work with me, this is what it looks like. But every time you show up on social, let's say to talk about this, you're going to remember your why, right? Because to create a more peaceful full world, to have people who are more in alignment and content with their story, who are ridding themselves of this stress and this anxiety and this fear uh, and this worry will absolutely make the world a better place and connect people, right? And so mm -hmm. it's why we need to always tap into our whys as entrepreneurs. Yeah. Because when we go back to our whys, then the excuses of, oh, but I don't really know and I don't know what to say and I don't really have time and I hate social media, all of that sounds, right, pretty ridiculous <laughs> when you know it could be like the domino effect of you showing up and telling more people what it is that you do could literally create more joy and peace in the world. Yeah. Yeah. That's potent. Yeah. Right. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that goes for everybody that goes for all of us. You know, we're, we, we create a business to serve, to serve others, right. To help others, um, create, have, find a solution for their problem. Yeah. And that's, that's what right, we're yeah. doing. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to share that maybe I haven't touched on? Mm hmm. I don't think, I think so. You really let me talk. So I feel like I, <laughs> I probably over talked and to Not answer some of my questions. So is there no, anything you want to ask about your reading? Um, okay. Well, so I love that I'm a warrior. I love that you said that. Um, I love that I'm a magical alchemist and that I can turn stones into gems, you know, in a sense, um, that, 
gets me very excited. I also love that you reminded me how strong my intuition is because I know that, but I think we need a reminder. We all need a reminder sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I think that it's part of the reason why I need the reminder is because my, it does definitely clash with common sense. Yeah. 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 Many times, even though we've done so many things that don't make any sense <laughs> from other yeah, people's Yeah, but sometimes we need a reminder. Yeah, it's yeah. when we get stuck in that churn of, you know, those beliefs that, that always come up. We always yeah. have to turn those dials. Like those are not going to disappear. That's part of being human. Um, I think that, um, I think that's really exciting that when you have uh, this churning going on, what you can do is put a, a vision board up or you can put reminders somewhere that you, you always walk past. For mm. me, it'd probably be the kitchen. I spend so much time cooking for my 17 year old son, right? Now, right. And then just remind yourself, remind yourself of the synchronicities, remind yourself of the things you're capable of. That's mm. the stuff that I think we, we need in front of ourselves when we have that churn of, I, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I'm anything special, all that kind of stuff. Remind yourself of what has happened that's really been magical. What has happened yeah. because of your intuition, what you've been able to achieve sometimes, yeah. you know, it's just, it's, it's worth reminding ourselves about that occasionally. I think it's super powerful. Um, and then the other thing, you know, that you, what really stuck out is like, there's an area where you're like something, there's an area where I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. Yeah. And I'm like, Hmm, what is that? I don't I'm, I, Um, it feels like it resonates with me in so many different ways, but I think, yeah, but I'm not sure what exactly it is. So here's another question then, Kelsey. Yeah. When you sit, okay, so yes. you're seated now and okay, this is maybe a different experience because you're, you're attentive and you've got a job to do right now, but when you're sitting yes. at a table, how do you sit? Do you sit on the edge of your seat forward? Do you sit back and sit a little bit more on your tailbone direction? Do you, do you know how you habitually sit a bit more? I guess it depends. Um, yeah, I guess it depends. Cause I'm thinking of like, how do I sit at the dinner table or how do I sit on the couch or how do I sit? I mean, um, when you were sitting I, in Bhattakanasana to take your feet picture, did you yeah. find it was easy and you were able to hold your chest up out in front of you yeah. or did that feel yeah. like work? No, no, that doesn't, that doesn't feel okay. like work, but I'm always try. I'm always, if any, if, if I can, I'm always trying to cross my feet, even in my desk here, like in this chair, like you'll see yeah. me kind of do that. I like right now I'm, I just sitting, you know, cross-legged and then I, and then also then I get this, you know, the posture comes up. Yeah. Um, well, the I other do, read of that, I love I... sitting cross-legged. However, I also have noticed though, and I don't know if this is about sitting, I'm noticing, and I think it's probably because of the computer and our phones and also my age, I'll be 50 this year, but I'm noticing like if I'm walking, I'm noticing, and I've always had really amazing posture. I'm realizing yeah. that my shoulders are starting to come forward and I'm like, Ooh, Ooh. And I'll just, I'll just do a little, yeah. you know, yeah. roll of my shoulders. Cause I'm noticing my posture. And even my husband goes, I'm noticing your posture. Cause you always have such great posture. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's related. Could be like, that's kind of like the weight of the world, right? That's what the Chinese mm -hmm. says. The old people start to turn in like that's because their past is getting heavier than their potential. Right. So the way that you remind the universe that you still got lots in you is to, is to straighten out. I have that too, yeah. where I, now it's more work to do that because your past starts to become really heavy, right? Or your yeah. experiences start to become really heavy. So sometimes we have to clear those out. Like the sea of forgiveness at the back of the heart would be a place, right? What are the things that you first and foremost are not forgiving yourself for? We're mm -hmm. really hard on ourselves. Like what is it that you're uh, unable to clear out of there that you're, uh, something that you, yeah, you're a little bit rigid with yourself on. You don't, you're not a rigid person, but I think, yeah. um, and we all have things that we're just, yeah, there's yeah. some discomfort uh, about it. We have to let that go. And, um, and then there's things where other people have been involved and every time, you know, when it's clear, because when you think about it, you no longer have a flush of emotion about it. And you know, when it's still swimming around and you see forgiveness, because when you think about a particular situation or something, somebody did, um, yeah. you have a flush of emotion and it makes you feel very uncomfortable. So those are things that are still hanging around. So that, that would be something that would relieve some of the pressure. Um, but if you're able to sit upright and cross your legs and you've got a nice lordotic curve, 
mm -hmm. your back you when you sit, yeah. then it could just be because the second reading of it, remember I said to you was, it's like a strong thumb. So there's a yeah. bit of stubbornness in there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then, so then if it gets too dry and cracked, then it's a little bit too stubborn, but it's not too stubborn, right? There's not a lot. It's just a little bit. Um, and then it's also the work that shows up there too. And so again, it's the degree of it. So if you're working a lot without taking pauses, then you've got these dry feet. If you yeah. really are, if your body is screaming, I need a rest so that the, my kidneys can rejuvenate, you have cracks in your heels. So, but I didn't right. look like you had cracks in your heels. They're just dry. They're just dry. Which is, yeah. So we get dry when we, when we work a lot, we literally lose moisture. Right. So yeah. it's just kind of like taking those pauses and then the stubbornness, right? Why is it showing up in the heels? Well, because you got a bit of a stubborn streak. So um, and maybe yes. that's, it's yeah, the tenacity, right? The tenacity yeah. of like, okay, I'm going to get this done or I'm going to push through this no matter what yeah. kind of thing. I, what it's, it's seeming, I've ha been having these conversations with my husband right uh, recently too. And he was like, you're back. He sees me back at a stage where, the amount of work I'm putting in isn't necessarily being reflected in, you know, just in terms of even just monetarily or abundance and other, other, you know, forms mm. of what I'm receiving. I'm putting way more out than what I'm receiving in. And that's happened throughout my, my life. He goes, there's, there's less flow of that give and, and, and take. And, mm, you know, mm -hmm. and we were talking a little bit about it in monetary, monetary terms. And he was like, you should be making X, Y, and Z at this point in your career. He's like, in my opinion, just because I see what you're putting out into the world and I see all of the, the, you know, the good that you're doing and these, you know, these people that you're helping, he's like, there's, you know, there should be no reason why you're making less than, you know, X, Y, and Z. And so when you said spinning my wheels, I thought, oh, maybe yeah, it has, has something to do with that. That relates. Yeah, I was just going to say that spinning the wheels was probably the right term for that. Then you're just kind of busying yourself. Yeah. And the movement forward is not happening. So that's maybe in this that's case right. financial. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and it's so interesting this because I'm actually lately I've been thinking about I'm going to take Fridays off. Yeah, I'm exactly. You mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah, it's the go with the flow week. that shows up in the heels, right? It's that lack of being able to kind of let go and just kind of float in the water, so to speak, float mm -hmm. with the current instead of digging your heels in. Yeah. Yeah. And we get, Amazing. you know, I do that too. It's like I get busy and I do and I, and we have goals and we get a little bit tenacious about it. Right. And we want to, huh, we get it, get this done. And really, if we just kind of look around and just kind of, take a deep breath and relax mm -hmm. and let go a little bit. Sometimes the flow then can come to you. You allow something else to come in that you, then you were focused on maybe, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting too, because, um, my, my med I think I, I mentioned this to you, my, my workout regime, my meditation practice like that has definitely been, I'm still doing it, but it's definitely been put on the back burner. Um, I'm not making it as much of a priority as I normally do. There's just more hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, my husband's been gone for five months too. So there's that. Yeah. It's a right. Lot. I, yeah. I've yeah. been holding down the fort here. Oh my gosh. I just had that for a week. My husband was away and I was just like, I thought of you. I know it seems so silly. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> it's just, even if they, you know, they're gone most of the day and you have to do quite a bit of the, the tasking at home by yourself, there's still relief at some point <laughs> in that's a 24 right. hour period, right? And that's missing. So yeah, that's definitely for sure part of what's going on for you. But also, um, I have to go out to the grander scheme here. And especially because you're an alchemist. Um, if that is your magic, then you have to be willing to lift yourself up to, to a height that, that you could see the big picture. So, yeah. and grinding away and getting stuck and very focused is great for pushing through little holes. But if you're really looking for big resonance and your, your flowy vibe in life, you have to kind of be able to go up and, and take a really good look at it. And um, what was I just going to say? Um, I lost it. There was something coming in that I was just trying to trying to get out there. But I think it's more, I think what I'm feeling when we're talking about this is more the, 
Yeah, the ability to get out of your own way to allow yeah. for the flow of what's coming through to really get to you. Yeah. I think that's what I feel like. Something like that I need that's coming through. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think I have a similar thing, but um, no, it's... Yeah. Yeah. You're obviously ready for something and you may not be opening that window to let it in. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because I've, again, we were talking about intuition. I've felt that recently. Uh, like I felt like okay. there's, gonna, there's a shift happening and I don't know exactly what that looks like. Um, but I feel like, yeah, there's a, there's a shift happening. And so, and I think, um, I can, I can notice some old behaviors mm -hmm. of, of mine that I think are trying to hold me back. Right. But I also know me. And so then I, but I want to move forward and that could also just end up perpetuating this spinning of my wheels, so to speak, because, um, you know, I'm, it's a little bit of like behavior that's holding me back, but with the, like the, the motivation and like, well, I have to do, I have to do this. I have to, you know, mm -hmm. um, I have to effort. And so, yeah, they call it that perseverance loop, right. In, um, psychology, it's yeah. that sort of, we persevere on something that we know works yeah. Um, and sometimes, sometimes we need to step out of it. And, and especially, yeah. so the big picture for me that keeps coming in all the time is, um, we have no idea actually what this is all about. So really all we can do is trust that our being here for this blip on this 365 day scale, you know, five to 12, if Neanderthal humans showed up at five to 12, how, what yeah. is it? So I think that for me, our ability to feel emotions and feel joy and love and stuff, that is so super important. We have to make sure that we get a, a huge dose of that and we can't mm -hmm. lose sight of that even when we're in business, I think, you know? Yeah. yeah. And maybe even that reminder, just going back to the basic Dalai Lama, like loving kindness, use it up with yourself, use it with your community, use it. And then just listen, like have your ears on too, right? You're the magic alchemist. You're going to hear something. You're going to see something be yeah. on the lookout, be vigilant for those signals. What is it? What am I missing? You know, yeah. turn your angles, look at something different and yeah. see there's definitely something vibrating around you and you just yeah. have to notice it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very so esoteric there, but powerful <laughs> Jillian. <laughs> Jillian, how can every how can everyone find you? Because after this goes live, everyone's going to want to call you and send you photos of their feet. Oh yeah, I mean they can just go to my website and um, um, and and have a look at what I do, JillianWagner.com, and they can also just send me a direct email, hello at JillianWagner.com. That'll land as well, or contact me over Instagram, JillianWagner65, and um, message me there. Yeah, we can just pick up and see um, uh, what it is that they're looking for if they want a reading or if they're looking for something different. <laughs> yeah. um, so thank you so much, everyone, for listening. All of Jillian's information will be in the show notes. Reach out to her. Get your foot feet red. Get your feet red, my friends. It's fantastic. And then you can work with her on literally how to transform your life moving forward. She's an amazing coach. Um, and, you know, I'm really excited to do this episode with her because I feel like she needs more people to know about her and the, and the magic that she is putting out there into the world. So thank you, Jillian, for being such an amazing guest. And for everyone, thank you for listening. And I look forward to connecting with you again next time. Ciao. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you.